Welcome to this Wiseau tutorial on list comprehensions in Python. So here's what you'll learn in the tutorial. I want to begin by giving you three messages to manage your expectations and to cheer you up about what's to come. We'll then do three practical examples, listing out the squares of even numbers, reversing certain words in a string of text, and listing out the hyperlinks on a web page. The only way to learn list comprehensions, I think, is by doing examples. And finally, I want to show you an example of a single line program to see if that style of programming is for you, where you do everything in a very condensed way. At the top right of your screen, you should see about now a link which you can click on to, at any point to download exercises and also to get files for this tutorial. But that's enough for me. As always, I don't like being on screen, so I'm going to vanish and hand over control to Sven, who will guide you through the rest of this tutorial. So let's get started. So before I show you about list comprehensions, I just wanted to say three things. The first is that you don't actually need them. They may make you a better programmer and they'll certainly reduce the number of lines of code you write, but whether you actually need them is debatable. So if you find what follows just too difficult to understand, don't worry about it. It's not an uh, insuperable obstacle to your Python career. The second thing I wanted to say is you'll often hear particularly old fashioned C sharp programmers talking about things called Lambda functions. Ignore them. A list comprehension is a better way to do the same thing. So um, I will later on in this tutorial series, hopefully have time to write one on Lambda functions, but you can easily survive without them, believe me. And the third thing I wanted to say is also ignore any talk about things called generators. A list comprehension has an alternative alter ego, which is a generator. But unless you're working with extremely large data sets, you just won't need them. So having set your mind at rest like that, let's look at what list comprehensions are and how you can use them. So what I'm going to do is show you two different versions of the same program. The first version will just loop over all the integers, picking out all the ones which are even and showing their squares. And the second one will do exactly the same thing using list comprehensions so that you can compare and, contr compare and contrast. So I'll put a comment in saying list squares and I'll call this basic. And what I'll do is say for each number, let's call them num, in a range of numbers from one going all the way up to, but not including 21, what I'll then do is say, if this number, when divisible or divided by two, returns a remainder of zero, then it must have been an even number, in which case I'll print out the number times itself. So I could put num times num, but I'll raise it to the power of two, which I hope you'll agree does the same thing. And if I run that program, you should see it gives me the first 20 squares, or the first squares of the even numbers in the first 20 numbers. Now I'm well aware I could have done this by changing my range here by using a step value to miss out every other number, but that wouldn't have allowed me to show my list comprehension. So that's my first version. The program I've just written does three things. It loops over a set of numbers. It then applies an if condition to extract only certain ones. And then it transforms a result um, and prints, out, prints that out. And those are the things a list comprehension can do. And the only real way to understand them, I think, is by example, which is why I haven't yet brought up the syntax. I'm just going to do three examples. So I'm going to create another version of this using a list comprehension, sometimes just called a comprehension. And before we proceed, I'll just comment out the previous lines. To do this, I'm going to create a variable called numbers, and I'm going to set it to be a list. And the first thing to do inside this list comprehension, as it's going to be, is to say for, let's call it x, in the range of numbers from 1 up to, but not including, 21. The next thing I need to do is say what I'm returning from my comprehension. That's why it's underlined the letter 4, sorry, the word 4, because it's not complete. So I could just return the number itself. It would be a bit pointless, but it would work. So if I then print out the numbers and try running that, you can see, if I just get rid of that, that it's given me the first 20 numbers. What I'm going to do is not just print out the number, but transform it. 
So rather than returning the number itself each time around the loop, I'll return the number squared. And this time if I run that, you'll see it gives me the square of each number. So the final piece of the puzzle is to not only um, transform the number, but also to apply an if condition. And you do that at the end. So I can say if, and then what I want to do is refer to each number in turn. And the way I'm going to do that is use my variable I've created called x to refer to this particular number. So I can say if x divided by 2 equals 0, just as I did before, then I can print out the numbers. If I wanted to, to get exactly the same result I had above, I could then say for num in numbers, and I could print out each number. And when I run that, you can see it gives me exactly the same output as the first version. Which is better? I guess it depends um, on what sort of a person you are. I think there's a certain beauty in this in doing it all so concisely, but you may disagree and think you're never going to write another list comp comprehension again and move on to the next tutorial in this series. So for my second example, what we're going to do is somewhat contrived. I've got a quotation here from the great Mark Zuckerberg, who runs Facebook. The biggest risk is not taking any risk. The only strategy that is guaranteed to fail is not taking risks. And what we're going to do is loop over all the words in that quotation, finding all the ones which contain the letter Y and reversing them. I did say it was contrived. So I could do this without a comprehension. And I think it's worth doing that again just to show what a list comprehension does. It's not really magic. So what I could do is create my variable called words to split the quotation into different words. And then I could say for word in words, for each word, if the word contains a Y, and just in case, I'll turn it to lowercase, just in case there's any case sensitivity. I don't think there would be any issues with this. So if that's true, then what I'll do is print out the word, but I'm going to reverse it. And to do that, I can put colon, colon, minus one. I think this is a slight amendment to what I showed you under slicing. Under slicing, I showed you that you had to begin at the last character, minus one there. But I've since discovered you can actually miss that out and it will assume you're going from the end to the beginning just from the fact that you put in the step value of minus one. So if I now try running that, you can see it gives me the three words. I think that's any, only, and strategy backwards by the look of it. And so then what we're going to do is the same thing using a comprehension. Just comment out the previous lines of code. So this time I'm going to create a variable which will hold a list of all the backward words which contained a Y all in one go. So I'll call it back Y words. Actually, that's not Pythonic, I'm afraid. You're meant to use lowercase for all your variables. And I'll set this to be a list comprehension. So I'm going to use the word word. Why not to refer to each word in turn? So I can put for word in words. And the thing I'm going to return is the word backwards. I'm going to use an if condition to pick out all the ones where there's a y in the lowercase version of the word. You can see how a list comprehension it really is just a loop condensed into a single line of text. And what I could then do if I liked is loop over all these words. I better not use the word variable word because I've just used that, so let's call it w. So leap over all of the items in my list comprehension and just print each one out in, in turn. And when I run this, you should see exactly the same results because it's doing exactly the same thing. So that's my second example. So for the third example, we're going to look at a file called listing-hyperlinks.py. You can get to this by clicking on the link at the top right of your screen to download files to do with this tutorial. What this will do is go to this website. It looks like this, very kindly provided by some company as a test site. And what we'll do is scrape this to get all the hyperlinks on it. Now at the moment, it doesn't do that. 
What it does is uses the get function to go to the website, checks if it returns a status code of 200, and providing everything's okay, it gets a text back, splits it up into different lines, and print the, prints those lines out. And if I try running it, you'll see that what I get is a bit of a mess. So what I'm going to do is, as, as, as it's becoming customary, I'm going to do the same thing in two different ways. Firstly, I'm going to loop over the lines normally, picking out the hyperlinks and showing each one stripped of its spaces. And then I'll do the same thing with a list comprehension. When I was first learning list comprehensions, I found them a bit tricky to understand. And that's why I'm doing lots of examples just to prove what they're doing behind the scenes. So let's go for the normal version first. So what I'll do is say for line in lines. And for each line, what I'll do is say if there's a hyperlink in the line, and the way you can do that is by testing whether there's an A tag. That's how that's written, or the beginning of it that's written. So if that's true, what I'll do is print out not the line, but the line stripped of any preceding and trailing spaces. And I'll just comment that out so that that doesn't obscure the output. So if I now run this program, you should see it gives me a list of the hyperlinks. We've done this before, actually. And what I'll now do is do the same thing using a comprehension. It's version two. So for this second version, I can say for, uh, let's call it line in. And in square brackets, I'm going to create a list comprehension to do everything in one go. So to do this, I'm going to say for, let's call it Y, just to prove that you can use absolutely any name you like for each item in a list. And I'm going to say for each Y lines, and what I now want to do is choose what I'm going to return. What I'm going to return is Y stripped of all its spaces. Finally, I need to go to the end of this and put my if condition in. And to do this, I can say if there's a hyperlink in line. So again, it's doing exactly the same thing as the longer version above. And what I could then do, because I've done all the work above, is just print out that line. Now, if I run this, you should see that it gives me exactly the same thing. There's three examples of list comprehensions. Just to finish with, let's do one in a single line of code just to show how complicated they can get. So take a deep breath, and what we're going to do is create a single line of code which will print out all the even squares. And this is what it should produce as a result. So to do this, let's start by creating a list comprehension. And we're going to say for each number in the range from 1 to 21. With the usual caveats that I could have used the step value to make this much easier to write. So for each of those, what I'm going to do is return, as I did before, x squared. But I only want to do it for the even numbers, so I can say where x divided by 2 is 0. What I then want to do is join all those the results of that together. So I can use a comma to join my numbers together. But that won't actually work um, because the x squared is returning an integer and the join assumes I've got a string. So what I'll need to do is add in a string function in here. And I think I've just got my brackets in the wrong place. I have. So I need to add a string function in there, which will convert my number to a string. And that whole thing should be a string of text, which I can then print out. Shall we see if it works? I'm a bit nervous about this. So if I try running that, yeah, it works. I suspect that's a step too far for most people. I think it probably is for me as well. But it shows how concise Python programs can be. And with that, that's the end of this tutorial on comprehensions.